Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. And we begin here at 5 with charges in the shooting death of a 5-year-old boy who found the gun and pulled the trigger. Prosecutors say the boy's uncle, Keon Pritchett, should not have even had that gun in the first place. Now he's facing five separate charges connected to the death of Carlin McDaniel. Jason Colthorpe in the newsroom to break down the charges. Jason. Yeah, having the gun and the ammunition, guys, is only part of this. Prosecutors allege he also tried to hide what happened after the fact. Who do I have here at the DDC? Keon Pritchett. 29-year-old Keon Pritchett pleading not guilty today to five charges, including felony, firearm, and tampering with evidence. The charges stem from the shooting death of five-year-old Carlin McDaniel, who was Pritchett's nephew. It's uh, alleged that uh, the uncle of, of the young boy, um, the defendant, Mr. Keon Pritchett, um, was in possession of, of, a, of a gun when he uh, took the gun and... Um, discarded of it after the shooting, which is why we have, which is what results in the um, felony possession and tampering with evidence. Police believe the boy found the gun and accidentally shot himself in the head Monday night just before 1030 on Oakfield. When police arrived, the boy had already been rushed to the hospital. Um, during the search of the house, there was also a safe found in the basement where the defendant um, sleeps which has his identification in it and also um, some ammunition in it, which is why we have the felon in possession of ammunition. The judge felt this was not a case of intent and decided on a personal bond of $200,000. In terms of an overall danger to the community, this really is the possession of a firearm that he shouldn't have been in possession of, but not any assaultive allegations having to do with the possession of that firearm. Now, if Pritchett makes bond, he'll be confined at home with a GPS tether. He'll be back in court for a preliminary hearing on this case September 8th. We're live in the news from Jason Coulthard, Local 4. Okay, Jason. Charges also filed today in the death of a two-year-old little boy who was found with a fractured skull inside a home on Detroit's west side. Lawrence Powell is charged with felony murder and child abuse. He's the boyfriend of the child's mother. Police say two-year-old Xavier Jones suffered blunt force trauma last week at Powell's home on Linwood near the lodge. Xavier later died at the hospital. Powell pleaded not guilty while appearing before a judge today with his attorney claiming Xavier's death was an accident. The State Bureau of Elections says an abortion rights ballot proposal has more than enough signatures to qualify for the November ballot. The Bureau recommends the State Board of Canvassers certify the proposal when that bipartisan group meets next week. Opponents of the ballot proposal are arguing a formatting problem, which has a lot of spaces between some of the words missing, should disqualify it from the ballot. The petition would put the right to an abortion in the Michigan Constitution should it pass in November. All right, now to forewarn weather. Some spots seeing a few showers tonight. Yeah, let's get over to Kim Adams. Uh, nothing widespread out there right now, though, Kim. No, this is a very similar pattern to what we have seen for the last several days where we do have some showers out there, but not everyone is seeing them or will see them. Take a look at Exact Track 4D radar. Most of the showers are up to our north and west at ahead of a weak frontal boundary coming through. So you have a better chance of getting the showers if you live north of I-69. However, we've got a little tail end of this coming in here later on this evening, so we can't rule out at least a couple of showers overnight tonight and through probably around 9 or 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. But otherwise, temperatures right now are in the low 80s at City Airport, also at Metro. 79 in Pontiac, also in Howland, 79 up in Flint. So for this evening, can't rule out a couple of those scattered showers moving in as we go through the next several hours. And then by midnight, we are down to 73 degrees. You know, it's Thursday. That means we got to talk about the weekend forecast. And I can tell you it looks like a nice one, but a little humid. We'll have more on that in the forecast in just a few minutes. Good. OK, Kim, thank you. Tonight, Detroit police are investigating a deadly shooting on the city's east side. Happened around 8 o'clock this morning on Main Street. That's Main with an E near the intersection of East Nevada and Joseph Campo. Ma Megan Woods live on the story. Uh, there were kids inside that house, Megan. That's right, Devin. We were there when police carried those children out of a home on scene. And now investigators have to figure out why or how an argument ends with one man dead and another man in custody. 
Local 4 arrived just as Detroit police started rolling out crime scene tape. They had Main Street blocked off for hours. Investigators say the shooting happened around 8 this morning. They're still piecing it together, but say the two men, the victim and the alleged shooter, knew each other. They were arguing and it escalated when the victim pulled out a weapon. The other man then pulled out his weapon and fatally shot the victim. There were children inside of the home at the time. Local 4 cameras captured police carrying them out earlier. While on scene, police recovered three weapons. We're still working to get more information, including if that man will be charged and put a name to the person who was killed this morning. Live in Detroit, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Okay, Megan. I'm Sean Lay. That is the accused Oxford High School shooter making a court appearance via Zoom from the Oakland County Jail today. This is a monthly hearing we monitor for you each month by law once a month. A judge must decide if a juvenile being held in an adult jail should remain there or be moved to a juvenile facility. Since the horrific school shooting last November, the accused shooter has been held in the Oakland County Jail. Each month, no evidence is presented to change that, and today was no different. The accused shooter will remain in the adult jail until another review next month. We will let you know if there are any changes to where he will be held at that time. I'm Sean Lay, Local 4. The Great Lakes Water Authority reporting progress today at the site of that water main break that sparked a boil water advisory. The first segment of a replacement pipe arrived today after a small delay. The rest of the pipe is expected to be delivered over the weekend. GLEWA originally hoped to have things fixed by early next month, but it's reviewing that timeline as of now. The boil water advisory, though, has been lifted. Today, crews in Trenton are working to clean up 14,000 gallons of diesel fuel and water mix that's made its way into the Detroit River. Happening at the site of the old Riverside Osteopathic Hospital, Grant Herms live tonight to show us uh, where it came from and what's happening now to clean it up. Grant. Well, Deb, we're going to take a little walk here because this is that site of that abandoned hospital. Now, all the way down here, you can see where that blue tank is. That just past that, actually, and under the ground about 10 feet is where that diesel tank is. And that leak is the EPA thinks that tank has been down there for 20 years, along with tens of thousands of gallons of diesel. As you come a little closer here to where I'm standing, you can see all those piles of sandbags. That's because crews had to go manhole to manhole inspecting a drain system where that water and diesel was flushed out because they didn't have city plans for this. This is off the city grid. They also had to block those with sandbags so that rain wouldn't flush anything else in. Now that brings us to this corner here where they are pumping out all of that diesel and water mix and they're pumping it over to giant tanks that you can actually see right here behind me about 15,000 gallons of liquid. Now that drain system that's off the city's grid still comes right this way and that actually brings us over to this first big spot where they were working all day today where they put down a sewer plug, essentially a giant balloon to block anything else from rushing into the river, the outspout just there where you're looking. The EPA's cleanup crew working hard to keep the leak contained. So far, just five gallons actually leaked into the river before it was caught by a neighbor who called it in. The EPA is saying the problem is straightforward, but it could have been worse. We had an underground storage tank. It's been neglected for 20 years. The wall breached. It got into the storm drain. It came to the lowest point and out to the river. Uh, I think I, I and I'm I absolutely believe that it is key that someone like said something about it and so that the city was able to you know, very quickly get this out and get EPA, Eagle involved and we were able to get the property owner to, to bring out these resources. In all, they've collected more than 30,000 gallons of diesel or diesel and water mix, storing them in nearby tanks, a third brought in just today. They think another 14,000 gallons may still be left. Now the work here on the river is essentially wrapped up. You can see here this big white and yellow uh, section of plastic here. That yellow plastic is a hard barrier that won't let anything else go out from the outflow drain here below me. Those white noodle things actually only soak up the diesel fuel. The next step here is to wash out this drain system with a biodegradable detergent and high powered water to catch anything else that's left behind that could take a few days. Back to you. Well, uh, Grant, what happens to that contaminated water, the tanks that are kind of behind you there? What happens then? 
Yeah, Devin, that's these tanks over here. We're talking about 15,000 gallons in each of those tanks. So that water ends up getting sent to a company that then separates the water from the diesel. That diesel that then gets sold to a petroleum and oil company like a marathon that gets to refine that and use that a little later in a blend. The water then goes back into the sewer system because now it's clean and it goes right yeah. back out into yeah. the river when it's all said and done. What yeah. a process. All right, Grant. Yeah.